Hi guys, we're here today at Rockley Station and we've brought along with us some amazing STEM leaders from Portsmouth Academy. They're going to be doing a beautiful communication piece about all the incredible work that goes on here on the Watercrest Line. Hello, my name is Ollie. Hi, my name is Safran. Hi, my name is Emily. Hi, I'm Alison. Hi, I'm Poppy. I'm here with Will. And we're here with Jessica, and she's a volunteer at Rockley Station. Hi, Jessica. Hi, yeah. So we have some questions for you about the trains here at Rockley Station. So, um, to start things off, how long have you been working here? So, I first came here when I was three days old, and my mum and my dad um, has been volunteering since they were younger as well. I've done it in various departments throughout my whole life but I started on the footplate about a year ago. What exactly is the footplate? How does that function and what do you do in the footplate? So the footplate is where the people are on the engine and the local on the front of the train. So we typically have three people there. We've got the driver, the fireman and the third man. Um, the third man's also known as the cleaner. So I'm currently a cleaner um, so I typically clean the engines in the morning and help them prep it and expose it at the beginning and the end of the day. Um, when we are on the train, one of my jobs is to uh, grab and swap the tokens. So that's like the permission to go between the two stations. Um, and other jobs that I do is just general lookout. I'm looking at the signals to see if they're clear or danger and learning how to become a fireman because that'll be the next step to take. Okay, so firstly, um, what, what is your job? Uh, so here I'm a fireman, so I shovel coal into the firebox to create steam. Oh, that makes the steam engine smooth. Okay, perfect. Um, is there any sort of like skills you need to like um, do your job? Yes, yeah, so it's quite a manual a physical job. Um, so you're shoveling coal throughout the day or throughout the evening um, in order to make sure that you've got enough steam that you need. Um, there's quite a lot of theory that sits behind it, so far as the science and the physics behind how are you getting the most effective combustion from the coal that you're putting into the firebox, making sure you've got the right air levels. So there's quite a lot of, lot of theory, uh, but mainly volunteering here. I think the main skill you need is the ability to learn and get on with people, really, and uh, yeah, muck, muck in and learn as much as you can. Yeah, I'd say like out of the three science, physics, biology and chemistry, I think that um, physics is probably the main one. Uh, and then I think that maybe chemistry is only sort of like caught in the job that's chemistry. Yes, yeah, certainly. So um, there's, uh, I'm not deeply involved with it, but um, the water that we put in um, to the, the boilers um, goes through a reverse osmosis process. So from a chemistry perspective, we're taking as much impurities out of that water and making it as pure water as possible um, so that we avoid getting any scale inside the boilers. So just like your kettle at home, um, if we put as pure water in as possible, that stops any sort of impurities sort of building up on the boiler. So when we come to overhaul them, um, they'll be a, in much better condition um, and it's better for the engine. One of my first questions is about engineering. Um, so what engineering challenges do you face when you're maintaining and restoring the locomotives and track? I suppose the challenge here is they're old bits of kit. So we've got locomotives that built over 100 years ago and those are built to different standards and they now need to be maintained to modern yeah. standards. So everything wasn't necessarily easy to take apart. It wasn't necessarily easy to uh, put back together and work on. So that's some of the challenge of working on Victorian machinery. Um, another engineering question is, when were the railways originally engineered to have, like, to handle all the heavy loads in like longer distances? The genesis of the railways, they initially started out as kind of horse tramways. Yeah. So before locomotives came along, and then over the years they started developing. The first locomotive was built, and then they started rolling out the railways and that idea. So it sort of progressed through the years. The longer it went on, in the same way, the, the Wright brothers' first flight wasn't too long, but you can now take a plane around half yeah. the world. The same sort of genesis happened with the railways going from horse and cart to what we see today on the modern railways, high speed trains travelling at 125 miles an hour. Okay, so the longer it's gone on, the faster and more efficient they've become almost. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, as technology has gone on. Is there any engineering challenges that you face when maintaining or restoring 
traction. The challenges are the sheer weight of the bits and pieces that you're dealing with. The engines that you've seen today, they weigh 150 tonnes. So if you think of just a con rod off the side, if you're just lifting it, it takes three or four guys just to pick it up. So when you're trying to get it exactly into position, and I mean fractions of a millimetre in position to slide it on, then you have to be very, very careful and it's very, very heavy to lift around. So that's a big consideration. Uh, what sort of things you do in... What do I do? Yeah. Now that is a great question because in fact in about half an hour, I'm off on duty to Onsford Platform. So what we will do in a typical day is open up the station, make sure that all the bins are empty, make sure that all the signs are put out and customers know when the first train's going to arrive. And when the customers arrive, you greet them, say hello to them, direct them to the, the buffet or the shop or wherever they might want to go. When the trains come in, you make sure they can get onto the train safely. Uh, and once we're happy that the train is safe to go, we dispatch the train. We say to the guard, the train is over to you, uh, and the train will then be dispatched from the station. What makes you want to do this? Why is it so special to you? I enjoy it because it, it, it's fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, it, it's challenging in that what we try to do is to make sure that all of our customers have a really good experience, they enjoy themselves. And to do that, we have to make sure they're comfortable, they're safe, the trains run on time. So we, we, you try and just make sure that everybody can have a good day out and have a good time. On a personal level, so this is mainly about you, um, what is your best experience working here at Ropley? Um, so it would probably be on the footplay side of it would be working with my dad because he is a driver on the engines and um, so having my dad in that was an interesting exciting thing and i loved it because it was a family sort of thing and it was something we enjoyed together so a very like train centered family then yeah very much so <laughs> <laughs> So what's coming out of the engine at the moment is actually exhausted steam. So that's that's not that's not smoke. That is just steam, sort of water vapor. Because um, I think that's say one of the misconceptions you can have from an environmental perspective is you see a steam engine going by and sort of clouds of white smoke out the top. A lot of it is exhaust steam that's been used, and there's nothing, yeah, nothing of, of harm in there. How much coal do you think it takes to power an engine? Uh, so it all depends on what we, what it's been used for on a typical day, sort of, and it depends on the size of the engine, but between, between like three and five tonnes um, in, a, in, a, in a day. Um, sort of, uh, Dan was talking about earlier about 400 shovelfuls. I've never counted it myself, but that sound about, sound about right. Is there any parts of the steam chain that truly fascinate you? When you've got a steam engine, you've got the tender with a big tank full of water. Where you're making steam in the boiler, that is over 200 pounds pressure, it's an enormous kettle. So as you're going down the track, you've got to get water at zero pressure into the boiler to be boiled up because it gets used up. And the way they do it essentially is they just use steam to blow it from one very small nozzle into another very small nozzle which catches it and it actually manages it to blow it through. So you know the idea when you've got a hose pipe and you put your finger over, the hose pipe is just ribbling out and then you put your finger over the end and it goes for a hell of a long way. It is as simple as that, the way that they get the water from the tender splashing around into the boiler to make stream. And that fascinates me every time. Do you see STEM and technology playing a role in a British uh, heritage railways? Oh, absolutely, because although they're 100 years old technology in one sense, there's lots of things you can try out on a steam engine. For example, when they're lining up the wheels, in the olden days, they used to have a long piece of wire, like a piano wire, with big weights on the end, and they would hang it, and that gave them a dead straight line. But now you can do exactly the same job with a laser, as big as my finger. You just set it up with a magnet, shine it along, and you can line up even more accurate than the way all these steam engines were originally built. So there's absolutely lots that can be done. My last questions are personal insights. So um, how do you think the railways have influenced modern transport systems? I think it produced 
some really good results. For example, we call ourselves the watercress line. Yeah. And that's because down at Allsford, there's lots of uh, chalky, mineral rich streams. Yes. So watercress was and still is grown locally. But before the railways, it can only be enjoyed locally. When the railway came along, suddenly you found it in Covent Garden in four hours. It revolutionised that transport. It managed to connect the country in a way we'd never seen before. It was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Easiest way to think about it, you see a, a freight train go along. It's got about 40 containers on there. That's one driver. If you did it on lorries, 40 drivers. Yeah. So much more traffic. And that's just one way the railway has definitely revolutionised this world. Do you think it's one of the most um, revolutionised transports in the last, like, thousand years or so? I think each method has their own pros, their own cons. Pros for railways, you can do a lot of mass transport relative ease. However, there's a lot of infrastructure to go with. Compared to something like a car, it's personal, you can go pretty much anywhere, but you're limited in what you can do. So I think the railway, for getting everything from A to B and just connecting everyone, it really helped. I mean, when the railways came along, a station would pop up and then a town would almost pop up around it. Yeah. That's why we called Medstead and Four Marks that. It was initially just a town of Medstead and then Four Marks, when the station arrived, it grew into the station. Why do you think it's important to preserve the STEM knowledge behind railways for future generations? Ultimately, because if the knowledge is lost, it's lost. And we can see a really good example of this in America. There was a generational gap for whatever reason and railways and steam were sort of almost decimated. However, here we have a wonderful wealth of history. So actually keeping people in the skill sets required, both old and new, being able to combine both of them will set us up for the future. And it's a way we can tell our story and also keep the story running. And preserve the history. Spot okay. on. Thank you so much.